Hello, everybody. <clears throat> Just waiting for people to show up. Yeah, maybe this live will have the typical number because it just isn't the cool, sexy case of Molly Tibbetts or Chris Watts. No, I'm said it's not a cool, you know, it's not the, you know what that means, rock girl. Don't pretend you don't know what that means. When people say, oh, yeah, the case of, that's really popular, you know. What the fuck? Oh, oh he said something. I, I, didn't, I didn't like the way it was and the way I interpreted it. So I'm going to, I'm going to have to call it out really quickly. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, the one that everybody out there says, oh, yeah, this is so, it's so, you know, it's, you know, with the media terms that way. So they play it all the time, over and over again. All right, Jesus. Now you grow up, all right? All right, so here's the deal. The, um, this case on Daniel Oberg, I guess that's how you pronounce it, it's not Oberg, but Oberg, um, uh, I made a, I did a live video on it back in April, but it went off the rails, you know, basically because of stuff like what Rock Girl just did right there. You know, it gets off the rails and off track and then everything goes into the dumpster, all right? Um, but when I was watching, uh, and then John Lorden put out a video today on the same case. Right, and then somebody else had mentioned that uh, to me the other day that I should do one on this case, and then I remembered, oh yeah, I actually found all the locations that they were talking about. Yeah. So let's see. Uh, well, let me just wait a couple minutes, see if more people show up. Hopefully the rest of you know what I what I was saying when I said uh, what I meant when I said it's not a sexy case, you know, because that's what the media is not. Oh yeah, it's got a lot of. Uh, it's of course I'm not referring to that situation as being that way. Okay, so to interpret that interpret it that way just means that you're sort of intentionally just trying to look for something. Okay, Jesus, my God. All right, so I'm gonna just wait a couple minutes. No, no, it wasn't. I'm going to get rid of this person. Forget it. It's not going to be a good, good time here. All right, see you later, rock girl. Have a good one. All right. So, again, see, John Lorden put out a video today, and I had made one back in April, a live video, and then it went off the, the rails, so I deleted that video, I don't know, if, I mean, the next day probably, right? And so he put out a video today, and someone mentioned for me to do a video on this a couple days ago. 
And then I already had all the Google Earth areas mapped out and I figured, oh wow, you know, maybe that would be a perfect augmentation to John Lorden's video. And in the description of this video, I have a link to his video and then also the vanished podcast on the same case. All right. So maybe after this, you can go watch that and then go back and you can refer to this again and sort of see where the locations are. All right, so here's the deal. Uh, Daniel Oberg, he, uh, he, was aid, he went missing on April 23rd, 2017. Uh, he was 28 at the time, six foot tall, about 165 pounds, brown hair, hazel eyes, you, you, know, you see what he looks like right there. Wearing a black shirt with a school face, like an alien. Hey, an alien, right up my alley, all right. A dark khaki, double insulted, uh, insulated pants, and then uh, again it was 4:23:17. Danny was last seen at Sweet Home at a Sweet Home Safeway, and he's on video at the Safeway at 12:45. I think it's actually 12:43, but you know, two minutes. What's the difference? He was in the store with a male individual, and another male was waiting in Danny's vehicle with his two dogs. And then 425, 2017, Danny and his two dogs, Misa and Coda, were reported missing. The vehicle Danny was driving was found on a side road within eyesight of Marcola Road near Mar uh, mile marker 13. Then on May 3rd, 2017, so that would be, let's see, five, eight days later, a farmer returned Coda, one of the two dogs, uh, the, the two missing dogs. So apparently um, they were both let out near where the car was found and they found one of the dogs on the third. Uh, people had seen him there, but then they disappeared and then they recovered one of the dogs. And then on May 14th, the other dog, Misa, the second dog, was finally caught near mile marker 12. Yeah. Let's see. And I believe they found the vehicle on the 25th too, right? That's what I believe. Uh, this two days after he went missing. So let's see. His dog missing, recorded missing. The vehicle Danny was driving was found. Yeah, so his vehicle was found on the 25th on the side of the road. All right, so let's, let's actually, this time I remembered. Look at that. I slid over Google Earth. I wasn't just talking about it with nobody being able to see it. All right, so back then in April when I put plotted this all together, I added a couple new things after watching John Lorden's video, okay? So here is the Safeway right here. You know, just your, your standard issue Safeway, I guess, in a shopping mall. And I, he was in here, caught on surveillance camera. Now, um, I guess he was there with two friends named uh, Sean and Caleb. Right now, Sean, I don't, it seems to me like he didn't know Sean as well, uh, as well as uh, Caleb perhaps. But uh, Sean, I guess, stayed out in the car with the two dogs and Caleb went inside with him. And they actually purchased some items. I think I wrote that down earlier. Let me see if I, if I actually did that or not. Let's see. I might actually have done that on the... Let's see. Yeah, I actually was fortunate enough to put that in the notes of the actual thumbtack right there. It's energy drinks, donuts, and what else did they get? And he, I guess a bottle of uh, like olive oil or something. <laughs> People were trying to figure out what the hell that was. It was for the dad said in the interview on John Lorden, or I think John might have even brought that up. It was about for the skin, something like that. So there's the Safeway right there. And that was on the 23rd at 1243 PM. Then two days later, his car is found 
all the way over here. Now, the thing is on the podcast, the dad's, or not the podcast, John Lorden's video, he says 42 miles away. I think he meant 22 miles because if you listen to the Vanish podcast, they say 22 miles, and that makes sense. I was really, like, confused. 42 miles? Because, look, here is where the car was found right around in this area, right? So if you take the measuring tape from Safeway and, you know, you maybe add a couple miles because roads aren't straight like this, that's 15 miles, right? So 22 miles makes sense, you know, with the road winding around and so forth. There's no way that would be 42 miles. That would be, like, way past Eugene over here, all right? So apparently the father was out looking for his son and he was out to mile marker five which is out in this area because this is 10 9 8 7 6 you know like maybe right in this area and then he got a call that the car was found back at mile marker 13 which uh, he'd driven by but you'd have to, i think it was off the road now if you listen to the description on the podcast they said that his car was underneath some uh, telephone wires. I mean, I think it, was, it had a power wire, excuse me, not telephone, but power lines. All right, and so what I did back then was I went to mile, mile marker 13, which is right here. You can actually see it on the ground. That's how I did it. I actually went on Street View and just kind of kept looking at the mile markers and then would skip ahead. But see, that's I don't know if you can see that clearly. Let's see if that's even, that's eh, not very clear, but maybe from this side you can see it. Yeah, see mile marker 13 right there. So then the closest power lines to mile marker 13 are right there. You can actually just see them. And the father said that the he parked his car and then walked into the field. So it sounds like if he came this direction, I don't know if it's this field here or this direction, because if he was coming from this side, it seems like he would say, oh, I parked my car on the side of the road, crossed the, the road, then went into the field. But he didn't say that. He said he parked his car and then went into the field. But of course, he could have just left that out. It's not like, oh my God, he... He didn't say that, so therefore, I can't say that, right? So if you look at this, he said he had no cell phone reception when he was underneath these power lines. Okay, now here comes the conspiracy theorists, right? <laughs> Anyways, the, uh, there was no reception underneath the power line. So I think the car might have been back here. Apparently it was in the mud or something like that. or. You know, obviously it could have been on this side, but I'm just going to, this looks more like what you'd say a field out there. That's how he described it. Then he said he went back this way to get cell phone uh, reception, and then he walked back, and, and then when he was near a gravel road that he said that the forestry service or something like that put in, it got better. Well, when you, when you go by here, you can't see it at all. Yeah, there's nothing there, but what's interesting, if you go to Google Earth, now, see, this is actually Street View, for, I mean, excuse me, uh, the satellite image from June 2017, what, which is amazing because it's actually only two months after he went missing, this, this image right here. Okay, is anybody else having buffering issues? Because I'm not dropping any frames here. Yeah, so what's interesting about this, it almost seems like if his body was actually laying out open and it was in, a, in the open anywhere, you could almost find him by searching around on Google Earth because this is a very clear satellite image. Uh, but again, we don't have any clue really where he is. But check this out. You see how that road's right there and it's just nice? It's like even has a curved edge on it. Well, when you go down to Street View, I'm going to put it right next to it. Watch that. Nothing. There is absolutely nothing there. And the reason is, is because the Street View 
is 2013. So they obviously built that road after this street view shot right here. And so I think this is the gravel road he was talking about. And then he got cell phone reception and then the, he got a call from the police. And I think they were gonna, he it was the officer that actually had looked and found the car and he was gonna meet him there or something like that. And you know, to be honest, they, they just told the dad to go pick up the car and drive it home or he was gonna get a ticket. You know, so then the, the dad drove it home. So I think, uh, I don't know if people are buffering. Is Kay Gadbury the only person buffering? Uh, okay, other people are too. Yeah. I don't know how to help you on that. I'm not dropping any frames on my end, so I apologize for that. So the officer that apparently found the vehicle, this is just by my memory right here, had the father meet him at the car, basically. And then he said, oh, yeah, just drive it home. And then when the father drove it home, he started finding, you know, it was odd. He said there's things in the car that aren't even his. He even mentioned that he had to, uh, I think it was something like he had to push the seat forward to use it like somebody taller was in there. And so his car was, you know, let's just say this. His car was in this area right here. Now his two friends, Caleb and Sean, after the 23rd, they just kind of went AWOL. And basically Sean just disappeared into thin air. Nobody saw him. Nobody knows where he was, what his alibi was, or anything. Even to this day, don't have... Uh, any chance are you guys all buffering i apologize for that but i'm not dropping any frames so it's going out there it might be just your internet connection in your area right so if there's anybody that's not buffering that means it's your situation you see what i'm saying all right so here's the thing is sean uh he just disappeared. Nobody has a clue where he was. And I guess Caleb was being hidden. See, when I listened to the podcast earlier, I was doing other things. So I heard that part. And then I kind of, my brain associated with both. So, hey, again, I was talking to Daro. And she said, yeah, it was, Caleb was the one who, uh, her mother, his mother was, stepmother, I guess, was hiding him. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> well, I don't know if you can put a detective face on that. You listen to the same show. You, you just had nothing else to focus on. But thank you. <laughs> Jesus. Detective hats. Yeah, that's what, I, that's what this is about, Jay. It's a... Uh, I'm trying to augment his video. I'm showing the the actual locations that he was talking about. You see what I'm saying? Hey, there's Stephanie. I think she's the one that called last night. So if, for those of you who are just showing up again, I'm going to do this again. I'm going to do pull the LJ move and recap. All right. So here's the Safeway. This is uh, Sweet Home, Oregon, out in the middle of kind of nowhere, really. It's just a small little town. Sweet Home, Oregon. There's the Safeway that Daniel was seen at with Caleb and Sean. Sean stayed in the car with the two dogs. Caleb and Daniel went inside, and they purchased energy drinks, donuts, and some olive oil, which I guess apparently... Uh, keeps you warm even if it's cold outside if there's a little bit of sun that's what it w was explained on Lord and show right so that's it that was on the 23rd of April at 1243 then two days later his car was found at uh, let's see Wow, it was way away right there. Let's see, where am I out here? Mm 
There it is. At mile marker 13, right here, and that's where his dogs were apparently, they're just guessing, but it makes sense. They were both left there. I think the dogs were abandoned there with the car. Okay, I actually think that they were abandoned by somebody else and they were just dumping the car and the dogs at the same time. The dogs both left the vehicle. One of the dogs was found on, if we go back to this, one of the dogs was found on May 3rd. And then the second dog was found on May 14th. And the father said he was really skinny, like skin and bones. You know, really, because, I mean, think about how many days that is. That's 19 days scavenging you know off the land you know home owned pets like that have no clue what they're doing they'd probably run up to a bunny and roll around with it and play even if they were hungry <laughs> you know <laughs> not that that's that funny but you know what i'm saying all right so apparently the car was found right here by mile marker 13 underneath the power lines, which are right there. So the mile marker is right there, but the power lines are, you know, maybe 100 yards further, uh, you know, I guess southeast or west, excuse me. And it was right here. So the car was either on this side, in the mud, and on this side. Now, people... Are trying uh, were mentioned that maybe they were trying to make it look like it was stuck in the mud but they were easily able to get the car out like he knows his son would be able to do it, it was just rock it back and forth a little bit and then it, then it just pulled out okay so they don't believe the car was actually stuck there I just based on things that I've seen in this case it seems to me like the car was dumped there with the uh, the dogs in it and maybe even left the, the doors open or the windows open so the dogs could get out, something like that. No, that, that is me, Constance. Thank you. Yeah, but also in the link in this script, in the, the video, there's one that's through uh, Stream Labs. That goes right to PayPal too. Uh, but it also shows up on the screen. It'll put your name up there, apparently. That's what they, that's what they tell me. <laughs> I think I've seen it once. But hey, I appreciate it. Thanks. Uh, yeah, so the dogs were just running around, and one was found on the 3rd of May, and the other one was found on the 14th. So... Both dogs were recovered, and if you listen to John Lorden's podcast, apparently the one, the dog from uh, the second dog, I think it was, passed away recently from cancer. I, I don't remember if it was, which dog it was, though, to be honest with you. I know one of them did. All right. Now, also, on the show, John Lorden's show, with the interview with the dad, the dad said that he found, I don't remember how he said he found these items. Um, it could have been that it was, he got a tip to go up there. I, I don't know, but he said that there was a couple blankets, a sleeping bag, and this sort of... I don't know, like a leprechaun hat that his kid would wear. And he found those up here near Mark's Ridge. You know, I think on this road, somewhere off of this road right here. Okay, and here's Foster Lake. So it was north of Foster Lake, he said. And then it was up on, off of a hill of Mark, Mark's Ridge. So I'm just going to say it's in, the, in this area here. He found those items of his son's. You know, so that's weird, right? Like, how, I asked on, how did he actually know to look there? Was it a tip led him directly to the items? That seems so bizarre, because those items weren't the ones mentioned anywhere. 
So something, uh, I'd like to know how he knew to f look up there to actually find those items. He thinks there's about 10 people that know exactly what happened. They put a one in here if you've seen John Lorden's show today. I know I've said his name about a thousand times, but listen, he, he's, he's got way more subscribers than me, so it's not, a, it's not like I'm, you know, it, it doesn't matter. Okay, so most of you guys have seen it. Okay, good. All right. So does this help you guys out a little bit, just seeing the location, kind of give you a little bit more of a feel for it? I mean, basically, it's just sort of like here's, if you look at it on the map like this, here's Sweet Home, and then the car, the, the road that his car was found on was right here in his dogs, about 22 miles by road over there, but about 16 through the air. So here's something, though. If this really is something that's valid, where he found the blankets, sleeping bag, everything up here, which is the complete opposite direction. See, that supports my dumping of the truck theory. Let, let's just say that he was killed somewhere over here. Hell, maybe even put in this lake. Nobody's ever checked it for that, I guarantee it. Then the perpetrators, you know, maybe throw out some of the stuff here, use it even. And then they drive his car about as opposite a direction as you can. And they just dump it off the side of the road with the door open. And then the dogs jump out. They find those. But now there's just no way of finding Daniel. How does that sound? So would you guys be interested if I, maybe I can open up the lines? Because a lot of you probably have thoughts on this. What do you think? Can we do it? Sorry about that window on the screen there, just a second. <laughs> Man, this uh, OBS thing's doing some weird stuff as far as uh, going on to different screens. When I minimize it, it shoots across both my monitors, which is odd. All right, so you guys are going to call in because I'm going to put the number up there. Here we go. All right, there it is. And we're talking about this case, all right? Don't worry, I'm a nice person. Just not to trolls, okay? <laughs> Come on, you can do it. Well, I just need, I want somebody to call in that actually knows the case a little bit. This is Gray, you're on the air. Hey, Gray, this is uh, Mark. I'm actually a detective. Oh, yeah? Okay. Hello? Uh, what happened? Uh, hello, this is great. I don't know what happened to that last call, by the way. It just sort of went off. How's it going? Good. How are you doing? Uh, pretty good. Uh, sorry about that. Like, there was another call before you, and the person says, I'm actually detective, and then it just sort of went off the air. Probably somebody goofing That's okay. That's, that's good for me. <laughs> Oh, okay. So I watched I watched the, the um, video that John Warden did this morning. So it's just kind of caught my eye that you were doing, you know, a different video because I, I really like the different styles that you guys both do, different perspectives. Yeah. One of the main things that really stuck out in my mind with the interview with the dad this morning is um, the fact that he was talking about the officer seeming to have, you know, issues with his son. And when they've discovered the car, there was a missing registration and the insurance. Mm -hmm. And then when yeah. you tie that into the detective not wanting to do the search the area in the mountains where his phone was last pinging, 
it makes me wonder if there's some sort of connection with the law enforcement of something maybe went bad. I'm not I'm not a big conspiracy yeah. theory person when it comes to that, but it's just kind of, you know, a question <laughs> that, you know, kind of popped into my mind. My grandparents used to live in Sweet Home, and it is a pretty small, yeah. you know, close-knit town, and so it just kind of makes you makes you question if that might be a possibility. You, you live in Oregon, right? It looked like I saw 503 on there. I don't know. But I'm actually Washington State, oh. so. Oh, okay. Yeah, the yeah. Uh, um, yeah, it was interesting that I guess he got pulled over a couple different times for mm-hmm. like a mini, uh, what do you call it, a pocket bike or something, and then a, mm-hmm. and then a different, uh, and the cops seemed like they didn't really like him or something. He seemed like he's a likable guy. He's, you know, he's pretty earthy, you know, sort of total yeah. e- Eugene type person, you know. You yeah, know. pretty uh, crunchy type of dude. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I, get, I get what you're they saying. Seem to be, yeah. It doesn't seem that they have, you know, tried to really thoroughly interview the people that were with him that day. And the fact that Sean was being hidden out by his mom for quite a while. Was it Sean or was it the Cody kid? I think, well, it sounds like both were, one was hiding out, um, well, was being hidden by the mother. I think that was the mm-hmm. Caleb one. Or was it Cody? Okay. What are the two names? Is it mm-hmm. Co- was one it? of them is Sean, and then it's either Caleb or Cody. I, can't I think it was Caleb, yeah. Yeah, so okay. Sean was the one that just sort of was just gone, like AWOL, and then apparently he showed up someday. You know, like eight, six days later or something, he shows up, and nobody knows where he was at all, still to this day, where he was during that time. And you would think that law enforcement or somebody would be pressing him to know where where were you those five or six days, but it doesn't seem like it's a, a priority or even something that they're interested in in pressing for the information for. Maybe they already know where they where he was. Who knows? Yeah, that is interesting. I mean, and there's other reasons. You're saying that um, he didn't have the registration, and what else was missing? Mm-hmm. The registration and insurance, which. Are right. two things that you have to give an officer when you get pulled over. Yeah, that is true. But you know, he could have had like his insurance card, a little yeah. card on him, and then maybe he didn't. You now, some people, I mean, it's dumb not to, but some people just maybe don't have their insurance yeah. registration in their car. You know, I, I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a big, you know, thinking the police, you know, are conspiring to do stuff. That's that's really not weird. my thing. It just makes yeah. you wonder. Yeah, it does make you wonder. I, I'm not gonna. This isn't one of those ones I'm gonna say. Oh, God, that's so outlandish because the father did come up with all those different instances mm-hmm. and also, like you just said, the registration and uh, his insurance were nowhere to be found. Did they ever find, they haven't never found his wallet or anything either, right? Like, that No, that, the wallet wasn't something that they had said that he couldn't, they didn't really mention too much about it. But oh, yeah. why else do you think that they would, you know, the last places that his phone was pinging, you know, up yeah, in the mountains in the that. back of that gentleman's property, why would yeah. that not be a place that, you know, if the cadaver dogs are willing to go out there, they just need, you know, the owners just need the police to ask them, hey, you right. know, can you go out there with us? They and weren't the really specific, are willing though. To do it. They weren't that specific on, like, where that ping was. But, yeah, the, there was a 20, mm-hmm. his phone didn't ping at all, like, for... 24 hours, almost as if it was turned off. Then yeah. it came back on and started pinging. I don't know if you can see my screen, but the guy, the interview, it said something about highway between Highway 20 and 228. So around this yeah. area. So it's somewhere around in here, apparently, that it started pinging again. And um, that sort of makes you, again, it supports the car being dumped. It's almost like... Mm-hmm. You know, because everybody's aware now about cell phone pinging. There isn't anybody who doesn't. If if you don't know that, you you've hidden under a rock, right? So the thing mm-hmm. is, is I could see them driving back. Let's just say my scenario that somebody nefariously you got killed has nothing to do with the police. Um, so you drive the car back, and then when you're right in a certain spot, you turn on the cell phone again to make it look like. Okay, he's just been in this area. Because if you, if the cell phone's on up in the, by the lake over there, over here, if the cell phone was on over in this area, it would be pinging all over here, all the way into Sweet Home. Instead, you have it turned off where when you're dumping the body somewhere, let's say. And then when you come into this area, you turn it on, then it pings, and then 
it makes it seem like, oh, okay, he's sort of around his home, and then he, they dump the car over here, and it makes a little bit more sense, right? But they would really be looking all over the place if there was pinging over here, then here, then his car was found, you know, where, where we found it. That's just Maybe true. there was some sort of, you know, accidental drug overdose that happened with his friends or something, whether it was, you know, he, even though he was a, a crunchy yeah. kind of guy, you know, hanging around people that um, maybe weren't the, the most savory characters and he, you know, was just experimenting or partying and something, you know, an accident happened and these guys not having a good reputation, you know, are just kind of the thing where they are trying to, you know, hide the truth of what happened so that way they don't get in trouble yeah yeah that's i mean yeah it, it seems like it would have to be a little bit more nefarious i mean it seems odd that well, there's all these people miss di missing for five days and it was just an mm -hmm. accident i i think when there's an accidental drug overdose I, I know people do panic and do stupid things um it just doesn't seem like we wouldn't know where he was by now or something. It, it, somebody yeah. would come forward and just go, you know what, it was, he just died accidentally. Here he is. You know, instead, yeah. it seems something worse because they don't want anybody to find him, you know. But, yeah, I mean, like you said, I mean, it's possible. You never know. Well, I appreciate talking with you, and I look forward to, to what else the conversation carries on to this evening. Yeah, that was cool. Hey, thanks for calling in. Awesome. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Where's the detective that called in, man? I was so interested. I mean, he didn't even have a punchline either when he called in. He said something about, Oh, I'm a uh, detective. Like, that's really not that funny. You know, have something to, with some humor value at least. I don't even know why Rennie watches my, my videos. I, I was over there on hers, and I, she's doing the same stuff that, um, who was that? Uh, Bex Paranormal does, you know, the EVPs. and <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't do that kind of stuff. So what do we got in there? The, uh, check out the channel. You can check out her channel sometimes, make up your, yeah. I don't, I don't do that kind of stuff at all. That's... You know, tarot cards and EVPs doesn't work. You can you can make that. All you got to do is figure out what's going on in a story, and then make the EVPs say what you want to say. Like, hey, yo, hey, what's wrong? Oh, did you hear that? It said, "Hey, Gray, I was looking for you know like that." Let's see. Um, <laughs> Are you going to? Come on, Heather, do it right now. Call in cold. <laughs> Prank call. But first, we'll know who it is, though. <laughs> is, is anybody else want to talk about this case and maybe theor theorize on it? So think about that. The phone pinged right here 24 hours after... It was dead. There was no pinging at all. It didn't ping anywhere. And then, then all of a sudden the pinging starts up again right here. Hey, Karen. Done it. Wow, look at that. Gra. <laughs> Thanks. It worked. Something worked. Yeah, so for 24 hours, his phone did not ping at all. Then it pinged here. And again, there's the Safeway. I think they lived right here. I actually did a little sleuthing. Uh, thanks, Summer. I appreciate it. I did a little sleuthing, and Ken Oberg lives just right here, so not far away at all from that Safeway. And that's in Sweet Home. And then... Look how, look how convoluted the drive is to uh, get to where his car was. You, you almost have to be driving like this. And, uh, 
and then you you would have to take a left way up here like you complete you're almost going backwards for a little bit and then you get onto this road and wind around and then you're now you're getting to where the car is but that looks like the only way maybe some of these back tiny little roads there I, I don't know if those make it maybe there's a way to cut across through some of these back roads Now, I guess he smoked a little bit of pot. He didn't do, he wasn't a big druggie. He sort of seemed really health conscious. <laughs> no way, Stephanie. I didn't show exactly where his house was. I just sort of put a pin where it was. Oh, really? Let me, oh, let's see. Let me, let me check that out. If you just do it through PayPal, it doesn't show up. If you do it through that stream labs that's in the description of the video, then it works. Uh, so let's see. Well, thank you, Constance. I did get it on in email. I really appreciate it. That, that was very uh, generous of you. Thank you. Wow. Nice. Uh, I'm just seeing if there's any, I don't want to miss anybody else who, uh, I did have a new Patreon patron, uh, Ann Mello. Right, hold on. Oh, I got to get the call. This is Gray. You're on the air. Well, hello. It's Audra. Audra Blankenship. That's, I gotta admit, that's one of the coolest names ever. It's, <laughs> yeah, come on, who, I appreciate it. <laughs> come on, everybody. Isn't that I like it the, too. Isn't that just cool sounding? Audra Blankenship. It sounds like, I don't know. I don't even know what to. I wish <laughs> I had that name. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on now, you got a great name yourself. <laughs> uh, so, well, it is cool though. All right. All right. Thank you. Well, with this one, I really I got the feels on this one because. My, I have a kid that's about this age, and it's kind of similar. She's uh, she kind of a free spirit, we'll say. <laughs> a little, little hippie, a little hippie-like, I guess. Yeah, kind of yeah. like a hippie, yeah. and uh, she, you know, ha she's a dog lover. She has her dog life, basically, is what she does. <laughs> and um, when I was listening to her dad this morning, um, and he was talking about her friend, his friends, and how he was going to take them home and then come back. Uh, to the house to help his dad that just um, and then just right. didn't show up um, that's true yeah I missed, missed that part yeah he was supposed to come back he was, he was there in the morning right and then he said something about oh yeah I gotta do some things and I'll be back later to help you out with I think it was uh, uh, some ho uh, building a was it a house or something I can't remember exactly. uh, yeah like cab cabinetry okay yeah some yeah. house work yeah, yeah. Uh, and then they didn't show back up and uh, and then the friends uh, disappearing and not being able to yeah. talk to him and then the cops not helping him and him having to go and pretty much do every bit of the searching for this for That's his son terrible. himself it seems like looks like it had a it's big terrible. toll on on him doesn't it like physically you see yeah. him, you see him in the interview and he just looks like a broke like he's broken yeah, so I feel exactly. bad. I felt bad for him watching that. Um, I did too. I wanted to go right up there and and help him. <laughs> yeah. I don't, you know, I don't know what I do, but that's <laughs> that's what I felt like. You know, like they just don't care, or you know, like this kid. Even if he was into a little bit of drugs, and I went and checked out uh, the Facebook page, and there's some girl on there saying it was more than just weed, but you know, that's probably just oh. a rumor. Hey, can you hold on for um, one, one second? I gotta, sure. I gotta make, Hey, Rennie, no, I, I'm not upset with you. I'm, I'm just flipping you crap. I was like going over there and I was like, what is this? EVPs? Terra cards? Are you kidding? Okay. Now go back to what you're saying. Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Rennie, we love you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Who doesn't like um, Rennie? Come on. All right. We, uh, Oh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, but she looked like she was upset up there, and I wanted to make sure I caught her before yeah. she disappeared off the... No, yeah. that's okay. Um, 
see. Okay, so yeah. Uh, hang on. Yeah, it's no big deal. I'll we'll, gather it back. Yeah, we'll get it back. I'll gather it back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't have to worry. Uh, Renny, come on. <laughs> but I did go over there today. I was like, oh, wow, a whole EVP session. I think someone asked her about it, and then she was talking back to them, and it sort of brought, stirred up a little bit in chat. So Yeah, you know what I noticed? It's like on those EVP sessions, it sounds like this. It goes... And then you go, oh, it says I want to go to a dry cleaner. Oh, yes. I yeah. Think, yeah. I think unless you have actually had some kind of experience like that, it's kind of hard for anybody else who hasn't <laughs> had an experience like that to actually yeah. understand it. Well, like, because so, I think if you, I, any, anything that's on an app yeah. that you can make do sounds, uh, it's not legitimate. That's yeah. what those EVPs are. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that to me, it's sort of like uh, I don't know, really. I mean, somebody made the program, right? So they're obviously it goes out and grabs signals from different places and p plays them back, and then you can interpret them however you want. Is what it that's, is. That's that's true. That's true. Uh -huh. So yeah. That's that's just my uh, opinion. Uh, okay, I, I I mean I know that there's weird stuff that's happened to me, right? I was par I was personal right. paranormal number one, right? I know that there's weird stuff right. out there. <laughs> okay, yeah. maybe not like your level of weirdness <laughs> in your uh, situation. That right. was crazy, <laughs> and I'm so glad it's not going on anymore, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. Um. So where anyway, yeah. with with the kid, um, with Danny. Um, what gets me about him is that he said he was coming back and, and somehow yeah. it's gotten misconstrued as he was going camping because he had blankets in his car yeah. that his dad had given him for the dogs to keep the car there. from getting yeah. dirty for the for the dogs and those ended up on the ground somewhere. Right. Yeah. And how the dad got back to finding them I don't ever know. See that's but, the part so that's, that's not weird to going me. Going camping. Yeah, he didn't go. He definitely didn't go camping. The dad said he didn't go camping. No. He wasn't going camping. He was going back to help with the mm -hmm. the house. Um, I think the rumor, whoever started the rumor about camping, you might want to look into that because that sort of fits the lake and how his dad found the blankets. You see what I'm saying? It's a little weird, right? But I don't know how the dad actually found that stuff. It wasn't clear in the interview. Yeah, I can't. I can't remember, and I, I read up a little bit today, and I didn't see anything about it, so I'm not sure. Yeah, that's definitely uh, not that out there. that was a tip. Yeah. Oh, I do remember him saying it was on, like, a tip line or something, like someone anonymous tip line or maybe or something. Hmm. So. Yeah, but even, even again, then, like, really? I mean, isn't that weird? Anonymous tip line. Hey, there's some blankets. I don't know your kid at all. I don't even know anything about it, but, wow, you might want to check these blankets out. Oh, my God, and it just happens to be his. That's just so weird. Right. I mean, what, what did the tip, the tip, whoever called the tip in would have to have known the, what the answer was, right? I mean, like, how, how in the hell would somebody put in a tip and it just turns out to be his blankets, his hat, and, and sleeping bag, right? Right, right. How did that, the sleeping bag get bizarre. there? So he had camping gear, camping stuff in his car, right? Like probably, he had a sleeping yeah. bag. Probably, yeah. He probably had it with him all the time. Right. Um, like, like I said, my daughter is pretty much on the road a lot, and she has stuff with her all the time just in case she ends up staying somewhere, you know. Uh, and sometimes she sleeps in her car. Um, she goes and does plays and shows uh, out of town, and sometimes she sleeps in her car. It's not always the best. <laughs> enjoyable experience for mom when that happens but um it does happen so uh i can understand why he might have some of that stuff with him but he didn't have his camping gear with him he didn't have his fishing poles he right. had just bought a brand new sleeping bag a brand new camping backpack i thought two poles were missing was back at home i thought his fishing uh, poles <clears> were missing right? one of his poles that was a collapsible small pole yeah um his dad actually found in a drawer at home so oh, okay. it was still stored. What about the and other then one? another pole that was missing returned back mysteriously to the house oh, a geez. few days later. Someone brought it back. Like a few days after you so, went missing? Yes. Who would do that? Uh -uh. Think about how know. crazy that, like, <laughs> I don't know, man. This is, this is kind of what I thought. Maybe he loaned that older pole to someone. 
and they just brought it back and they didn't even realize maybe he was gone that's kind of what i thought about that extra pole coming back yeah um yeah it could be it, i guess he could have yeah. just returned it you know or someone you know or maybe they were like i don't want anything to do with right. this anymore and uh-huh. you yeah. know something like that it may, they may not have had anything to do with that uh returning the pole because um he wasn't going fishing or camping that day he was just supposed to be taking his friends home and he left once the dogs home to eat and you know rest up and then he came back and got them and then left again so i would think a guy was like go that, fishing yeah. or camping he would have picked up his gear too well, I, th- I would think a guy like that would have a he would always have i think he would always have a sleeping bag a fishing pole mm-hmm. at least like one pole or something in his car like yeah. I, I like i always have my golf clubs and fishing poles in my car <laughs> even you know so like I, you know, when I go golfing, I know that they're always going to be there. And uh, when I go fishing, I'm going to have my poles are going to be there. I'm not even like, I'm not even earthy like that, though. You see, like if you were like him, I, you know, I don't know if you hippie. I think I don't know what crunchy yeah. the other girl said. I'm not sure what, where that derives <laughs> yeah. from, like where that comes from. Like, uh, but I would think someone like that would have a pole in their car all the time because you're sort of out in the wilderness sometimes yeah. you know well just, yeah you might you know just be that way yeah yeah <laughs> or like me fish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah um yeah it comes from granola oh, I see. Baby says. I see. yeah well, okay. granola crunch um another thing that really bothered me about it was the fact that just because he had some run-ins with the police and not even major ones um and you can tell that these people are not uh, exactly well off that when they would go in to handle their cases instead of just you know letting them pay the fine or you know like with the um when they released him from jail from the, the seven day the instead of just letting him go even though it wasn't something he can and they kept increasing his fines and things like that and it, it, it just seems like they're just on the attack with this family with these you know, his poor dad. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder. Mm. Well, the thing is, I looked at the. Well, I don't want to, but like the property that the dad lives on, it looks like it's got a lot of cars and things. If you know what I'm saying, like. Yeah. I, I don't want to go there, but a bunch of like ten cars in the yard, and then all yeah. the other houses are sort of nice around it. So it could be like one of those things where, you know, uh, the, yeah. the police are sort of like hey you know people have gotten complaints and they're saying like hey you know trying to give them a bad time maybe get them to get move out of the town or something something like that i don't i don't know right just kind of picking at them because they're the low man on the totem pole and they would rather them not be there i get that i mean i understand that yeah i mean it's not it's not cool but it's no the way crap is it happens it just it's just unfortunate that they can't bother to help find the kid even though all that other stuff happened i mean it shouldn't matter um you know if it's a college co-ed that's cute or a a, a skateboarding kid um that got in trouble a few times it shouldn't matter we should try to find all of the people (laughs) you know and that's why i appreciate you doing this plus i couldn't figure out what he was talking about as far as directions go so i was really glad to see that you were bringing this one back up I think I watched that one that you did because when I was watching John's this morning, it all sounded very familiar. So I think I had watched or listened to the one that you had done before. So yeah, I did it live, and then I remember it just the, the show went to hell, like the beginning of this one. I should have just stopped this one and started over again, to be honest with you. But uh, when you know, sometimes after the maybe show, I yeah, I'll, maybe I, maybe I'll have to download it and just start it when the show actually started. You know, but yeah, what, I, what I said was something people yeah, right. always say about shows, you know, but you, you, anybody can twist anybody and say, oh, what do you mean? You know, so that was a little bit frustrating. But, yeah, I did it about I think it was like four months ago. I w- went through this whole thing. I think I added a few new pins. The ones I added were the lake because I, I didn't know that he found anything up here till this interview. Uh, all these pins were already in Google Earth. It's pretty cool how Google yeah. Earth works. You know, you can set up, I don't know if you can see it on the side there, but you can set up folders and then put all the pins for different cases in that folder, and then you can collapse it. 
Uh, I, like, I don't know if you can see off to the left here, there's, there's folders. Like this is the Daniel Oberg folder. And then I just open it up and then there's, you know, Safeway, 9 mile mark, 10 mile mark, 13, 12, you know, the power lines, different things like that. And mm -hmm. so I thought after seeing his video that a lot of people like to see the where and have a visual representation. So that's where I actually think he and I would augment uh, our, our styles yeah. complement each other because he's totally different than I am. I do more of the visual spatial analysis kind of you know i i don't really know how to explain what i do <laughs> but to, you know um, technically but maybe you could try it's it's more technical and his is more of a kind of a uh who who what when where and yours has that also but yours is more technical about the facts and his is more about the emotional aspects and especially when he brings in danelle it's about um about the emotional aspects and the backstory. Yeah, see, the, I think they're sort of, of the like person. more like they yeah. are similar in a way. He's more technical than she is, uh, but right. I'm, just, I'm just totally different than both of them, basically. So yes, it's like I uh, like watching all three of y'all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, do, it's, <laughs> it is. That's what's do, cool. If you all do the same story, I feel like I've gotten every. <laughs> aspect of it <laughs> see i totally agree i agree with that i actually think that we should say you know like basically us three i mean there's other people who do the same thing but it's for some reason it seems like we're all connected somehow mm -hmm. it'd be kind of cool to say hey okay which case are you doing okay great you do what you do i'm going to do what i do and we'll all just bombard the airways if you will with this story and get it out you know Get because, it out there. Because yeah. she has like 200,000, you know, got, I mean, ludicrous number of subscribers. I've got, all, get heading to 20, Lorden has like 60, you know, but that's a I lot think, of people. I think, yeah. I think I started with Lorden when he had like 4,000 subs. Uh, yeah, yeah. Now I was recent. She yeah, just, I She agree. just took she off just like a, a I'm cannon. the same with you. <laughs> yeah, she took off like a cannonball. Dude. Like she just one day she had two thousand subscribers, and then literally, like a month later, had fifty. And then it I'm was telling amazing. you, it was because that makeup channel. She had a makeup channel prior <laughs> to having her true crime channel, mm. so she already had a pre, a pre based audience. So they yeah. they jumped over, and a lot of people enjoy um, trying to help with cases and stuff like that. So. Yeah. Anyway, I'll jump off here in case someone else wants to call. I just wanted to put a few points in there about um, the. Yeah, you've got you got, got in some good ones. They're ones that I was I was so focused in on the location part, I forgot those little those details right there. If I was making a standalone video, I'd probably have it all written down. But I was kind of like most of that was all in his video today, so I thought I would just show the locations and some just general the general story and then everybody can go watch yeah. his to get the the interview with the dad and by the way i i saw someone up there mention whenever i said um cute college co-ed yes i was saying that and i don't mean any disrespect to any missing cute college co-eds there are a lot of them um but for whatever reason it seems like especially white young females that are uh, visually appealing mm -hmm. get a lot of attention and the rest of the kids who kids I say kids because yeah. you know any anybody like you know under 25 ish is a kid to me <laughs> um, don't get the attention that 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 bracket seems to get so it's, it's yeah well it's, that's why um, I think it'd be great when the bigger ones that like I was saying, when the bigger ones that get like five hundred thousand in donations, that they should give some of their money to those lesser ones that you're when, once the case is solved and there's still a huge fund, you know, give it to those cases that aren't ever going to get that type of uh, exposure. I bet they will. I, I I bet I bet they will on this one. I um, hope so. I wouldn't doubt it. I bet it. I bet they will. Okay, well, okay I'll get off here and uh, let someone else come in and say what they got to say. So okay, cool. Talk with you later. Hey, appreciate you calling in. It's always good. Thanks. Right, bye bye. Bye. Hey, Lacey, why don't you call in? Laced with Lacey. Come on, you can do it. 
Dial in. Yeah, I watch both of them. I watch Lorden and I watch Helen. I'm just amazed at how her sub count so quick. She didn't really put in the, you know, what do you call it? The, uh, the years of effort. <laughs> this is Gray. You're on the air. You can't deport us all. Kim is a... Oh, another idiot. God, Jesus. All right. I mean, what does this show tonight have to do with anything like that? Yeah, same guy that called last night. You can't deport us all, he says. As if this show has anything to do with that. Never mentioned deporting anybody. I think he's got the wrong show. Is anybody normal going to call in or... Yeah, Lacey, call in. You can do it. <laughs> Every corner. <laughs> Oh, come on. Right. You mean Baba Booey? I think it's Bobby Baba Booey. Yeah, I just don't really get the whole that whole comment. Like what's what's the point of it? It's like are you calling to support the killer? Or, like, wh what's the point? Doesn't make much sense, does it? Yeah, I guess the term I was looking for a minute ago was paying your dues, you know? Like, you're on the internet cranking out videos, putting a lot of work in for years slowly building up your base and then somebody else comes i mean you know they come on and bang they get like a thousand a day subscribers and you kind of wonder like i mean the life isn't fair like that right but it just sort of makes you frustrated a little bit that's it this is in oregon in uh, sweet home oregon So, let's see. Uh, this is Gray. You're on the air. He says shyly, hoping. Hi, reason. Gray. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's me. It's me. I was talking to my Thank brother, God. and I was mentioning the case, and he just told me something very interesting. So I thought I'll call because I don't know this case. You, you know, you gave me. You told me to watch the video, and I did. So I'm not. I I don't know what to speculate. But he made a good point. And I wanted to share with you and see what you think. He told me to come. He's, he's, he's watching right now. So, hi, Mike. That's my brother. Hey, Mike. <laughs> I, made him I made him subscribe. <laughs> oh, wow. He got me up to, yeah. uh, he got me up to, uh, he got the 102 mark. I think yeah, I, think I was at 103. I, I lost a couple. I subscribed last night. <laughs> cool. Yeah, they like this stuff like me. So, anyways, this is Mike's theory. Uh, well, why doesn't think, Mike call? I remember. Oh, I don't good. know. He's shy. I don't know. Oh. And he's in Canada. So I guess it's probably long distance. I don't know. Hmm. But anyways, uh, he, he reminded me of a story happened when I, I think it was like probably eight years ago. Uh, one of his friends, um, his mom, uh, she's kind of, she, she's rich. And the friends knew that. And he wasn't into drugs. So it reminded me a little bit of, you know, um, the story. Uh, he was into health. He did, he did some weed, uh, but nothing else because he cared to do any drugs. So anyway, these two friends asked him to do some heroin. And he said, no, no, I'm not going to do any heavy drugs. I'm not into that. So they waited until he fell asleep. 
after he fell asleep, what they did, they injected him, you know, with the oh, heroin, geez. and then in the morning, they found out that he yeah. died. So, I mean, the uh, odds are, so you're, you're thinking, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, just because it happened, like, one time, you know, throwing out, like, a No, no, what I'm saying, what I'm saying, because one of his friends, Sean, is a drug dealer, what if he just trying to make him get into heavy drugs and maybe they did and he overdosed they panicked and they dumped his body that's that's my theory i mean i, I mean I'm, you mean I'm, like I'm he not, they ejected him just to get him addicted to it that seems they didn't inject him they probably told him to try it maybe they did some drugs together and he overdosed and then they panicked and they mm. dumped his body i'm, I'm not sure it's just a theory I, I probably well, that's, wrong, well, that's what that's know? what somebody said that's one of, that's the first caller said the same thing though they said oh, that okay. the sorry, first caller said the first brother. caller said that uh, that maybe he overdosed, and then oh, okay. they yeah. dumped his body. Yeah. You know, I mean, of course yeah. that's uh, you know a theory to throw out there. It's just yeah. You know why why is there all this cover up stuff? If it's really just an overdose, you know, like you're somebody's overdosing doing drugs. I don't know if you'd have such a wide ranging. Like somebody, you'd think their conscious would take over at some point and say, you know. Yeah. Well, if Sean is a drug dealer, do you honestly think he's going to call the cops and say, well, yeah, you know, well, we, no, we're, the we other do, guy, we're doing though. drugs? Well, not Sean. I think Sean's sort of, he doesn't really even know him very well. Like, I don't think, I bet you Daniel didn't know Sean very well, but knew Caleb well. And then you oh. think Caleb would say something at some point. Okay, then maybe I'm wrong because when I was watching the interview with the dad, I thought the dad said that Sean and, you know, his son would play video game and then he heard him talking about mm. that he knew people from the area. Well, maybe they all played video the game. I don't know. It seemed like they all just kind of, he had people just over, his dad would buy him beer and they they could just play yeah. video yeah, games. Yeah, but I, I'm, I, I need to go back and watch the interview because I'm pretty sure I he said... It was Sean that they were playing video game, and then he overheard him say that he knew mm. people from the area where they found the vehicle. So, so, so is I, his, his buddy that I hangs out at his house is a drug dealer with like heroin and. and well, I mean, he said a drug dealer. He didn't say what kind of drug, so I I'm not gonna speculate. But uh, you know, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I, I, it's just a theory. Just wanted to call. Could and be though. Tell my theory. Don't be mean. No, come on. It could be any. It could be. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. No, I'm. I'm, I'm gonna go with the alien abduction. You know that. Uh, that's just a theory. Don't be mean. There, it's, it's very reasonable. Okay. If you okay. believe okay. that okay. there Prove is. It. Yeah, Prove that's it. what I'm saying. Right. Right. I'm gonna say the same thing to you. Prove it. Prove what you just uh, said. Oh well. Okay, Nothing. I'll prove it. You can't. I'm a drug dealer. That means I sell all kind of drugs. Right, but you can't just prove not it. Just weed. You can't prove any of that. None. Zero. Nothing you just said you could prove. Okay. It's the same thing. It's okay, just, I'm gonna put we're I'm all gonna speculating. put my detective glasses on and go have an interview with Sean. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You gonna fly over there? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I'll I'll fly. Hey, why not? I'm not working right now. I'm at home. I have a lot of time in my hands. I'll go there and I'll have an interview with him. And look, I'll come look back. Look at to uh, you, Andrea okay? says, "Rude, <laughs> rude." Ooh. Like she doesn't know that you and I just do this all the time. This is just us. Oh me. my God, we look argue all day. That's why that? I didn't want to call Jeez. in because I knew Gray would be like, "Oh God, it's her again." Because we talk. No, I was glad. Day. I was actually shy to say something on the the phone because i wasn't sure if it was going to be another crank caller i don't really know anymore uh, when, when the phone rings i know i know these idiots they have nothing better to do but to her you know call you and prank call you that's because they're jealous of you that's all nothing else yeah that's what i think yeah, yeah. they're jealous of my friend grace so they're like uh Let's call in. Look at us. We're so important. Wow. Yeah, like the X-File anyway. guy. Remember the X-File guy that called like 20 times in a row? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, last night. Last I night. wasn't even sure how to stop it because I don't have the ability. Like, There's no way to block that, that you know, the number. All right. Oh, so, okay. okay, so let, let, you can let, hang up let's on do this. Right? Let's do this one more time. Right away. Okay, I'm going to go. I'm going to try really hard. Okay, go through your... Do your theory one more time. Kind of a... Uh, just straightforward. Okay, do it again. Don't talk about what okay, my, your I, brother said or anything. Just go right to like in this okay. case, right? Go okay. Uh, my theory is maybe um, one or two of the friends, 
you know, they they do sell drugs and they try, you know, to get him try different drug. Mm. Maybe he was allergic to it. Maybe he overdosed. Something happened and he passed away and they panicked. They're not going to call the cops and they dumped his body somewhere, took that vehicle, dumped it in a different area. And okay. I get it. That's it. Okay, so that's, here's here's what yeah. I would use to to refute it pretty strongly evidentiary okay. with evidence okay okay so when audrey was just on here we know that he was supposed to come home at like i don't know three o'clock or something and hang out with and, and help his dad so i don't you think he would try drugs willingly some kind of a hair you know a stronger type of drug during that time, knowing he had to come back home, drive home even, and be with his dad to help out. How old is he? Because I'm like I told uh, you, I'm 20, not that familiar with the case. Twenty-eight at the time. Okay, yeah. twenty-eight. Yeah, I don't know. That's, no, I don't know. That's a little bit more responsible age. No, it's still possible. I'm just saying it lo- lowers the likelihood dramatically, doesn't it? A little bit. That he's that he's really health conscious. He's 28 years old. He was going to come home later to help his dad. And then all of a sudden now he's trying new hard drugs for the first time. I, I don't know. It's just, but I mean, I, I get it. True. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying. That's true. But I mean, where did he go? Did he just vanish? I mean, well, why did one of the guys disappear for the four days? And one of them, his mom is hiding him. Yeah, like oh, well, what's the, yeah, what yeah, you're you're wanting to know like why it. is he missing? Yeah, I mean, who knows what actually happened? Like maybe yeah, it was weird, right? They didn't steal his car. They didn't really, you know, I guess they could have stolen his license and I mean his registration and his uh, you know, but what what would you do with that? It's stupid. So, um yeah. It does almost seem like what you're saying seems like something unexpected happened because there was it's not like he was rich and they could steal something it wasn't like there was something in his car worth a lot of money that they could steal uh did he stumble upon something he shouldn't see perhaps oh that's a good one i'd like to know where what he, he wasn't supposed to see yeah, like what was he doing? Like, where I want to know where where they were supposed to go after they went to the Safeway. Like, what what were they supposed to be doing? Did did you did we ever hear that? Well, according to his dad, he was supposed to drop him off home and come back, right? Yeah, and that was early. That was early in the morning too, right? Like seven thirty. But you know where they oh, were okay. going, though, is what I want to know. Like, what were they up to? You know, when he picked up, when he went somewhere with those two friends, he went to Safeway, and actually he left, I thought he left the home early in the morning, right? Like, his dad said he was up because he, um, somebody was texting him at night, so then he woke up and he couldn't go back to sleep, so it was like 7.30 in the morning, but then he's over at Safeway four or five hours later, getting energy drinks, and so, and so forth, so what was... What were they doing in those three or four hours in between? That, you know, then they go get drinks and the dogs are with them still. It's, it's kind of weird, right? It is what, kind of was weird. It, was I it mean, 10 a.m.? Okay, someone's saying 10 a.m., but I thought it was earlier than that. Because he said he was already up. And I, I think 10 a.m., everybody's normally up, right? But he made it sound Oh, like, yeah, by 10 o'clock, yeah. I thought it was like 7.30. Does anybody remember that from the dad's interview? If you could type it in there. but uh, I don't know. And from what I remember, he said early. Yeah, he said like, he woke up early that day or something like that. Yeah, so yeah, that's... Yeah, 7 or the, 8 o'clock. Right, that's what I was thinking. So then he says, yeah, yeah, I got some things I got to do, and I'll be back later after the dad said he needed some help. And so then he's seen it Safeway. Uh, gosh, I don't know, four hours after that, buying, uh, let me get the energy drinks, donuts, and then he bought some and the olive, oil. olive oil for perhaps like some skin protection. So huh. that's some weirdness right there, isn't it? <laughs> 
Yeah, so April 23rd, 2017 is when he went missing. And amazingly, the, the uh, image that we're looking at on the satellite image here is from June 2017. So it literally could be five weeks later, if it's like June 1st that they got this shot here. Kind of, kind of. So when, when did they, when did they find the car? A couple of weeks after? No, just two days later. Two days later, they found the car, and yeah. when the dad was talking about the ping information, uh, did it? Sh I don't remember. Didn't didn't ping where the vehicle was found, right? Yeah. So uh, the, there was no. Um, okay, so I guess he went missing on the twenty third, and then the whole twenty fourth, there was no pinging information at all in the phone records. And then the next day, it pinged right here, right in town, basically, right, right in this area right here. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. But oh. So, like, here's, yeah, I am. I'm, here's I'm the uh, Safeway, you know, so just right in the town that he lived. And then right, in, it said between, I think he said Highway 228 and 20. So this is 228, that's 20, you know. So let's just say in this area, I mean, hell, we could probably, let's try to do something here. Um, Somebody said Mar Marcola Road? Yeah, that's Marcola where they found Road? the car, but that's not where the ping was. Oh. I've already got the okay. Marcola Road. We've already went over all that. So let me do the... Yeah, uh, yeah you did. Let me do the... Uh, let's see. Cell Towers in Sweet Home, Oregon. Yeah, uh, there you go. So here, I think this is uh, their sweet home. I think there's a, looks like a cell tower right. Uh, hold on. Control. So that's Highway 20. That's sweet home. Let me just get a look at the map just to kind of get a, let me hit the, uh, oh, there we go. Now I got the correct orientation there. Um, they've got, looks nice. like there's a cell tower like right in here somewhere let's see let me let me zoom in on i'm gonna so you can see that let me zoom back out just so you can see what i'm doing here i'm gonna zoom back out now i'm gonna slide this over so look at the river there right and so there's that part of the river that goes like that that squared off look to it and then look at oh, right, right, right 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 there you see that that's a squared off part of the river i'm gonna put that back on Right there, so then around the bend and then up, and then I'm gonna zoom in on this. Now, there's Walk Walker Wood Lane, and it's just off to the left of that and the South San Yam River. So right after it makes that uh, Walker Wood Lane curves and starts heading off, it's to the left. So let's see. I'm gonna type in, let me type in Walker Wood Lane. Here we go. Walker, there it is. So there's Walker Wood Lane. I think I was pretty close to that, having that. Um, I wish this, it, it, what's great is when the sun's at an angle, then you can see the shadow of the tower. In this case, I can't see it yet. So let me, let me just back out a little bit here. That's Walker Wood Lane. Uh, Okay, let me do it what, using that little island that's in the river right there instead. That doesn't look like the same one. Sometimes over time it'll change, so you gotta... Okay, I see that, I see that. And then that's the little island they're talking about. I'm looking on another screen, just so you know. I'll put it over here so you're not okay. totally bored, all right? <laughs> No, I love this stuff. Actually, I'm trying to learn. <laughs> I'm watching you. I'm learning. <laughs> yeah, so that's the Walkerwood Lane right there. Then we go back. So I think we're, like, the cell tower is right in there. Gotta, let's see if there's a...
And it looks like it goes like this and then so it does straighten out right there. I'm just gonna load that up again. Usually it's quicker than this, but so right before it straightens out and goes that way. So it curves just before it straightens out. Alright. So it curves just before it straightens out. So it should be right in here, I would think. That's where the last Bing? Well, I, well, I'm just trying to find the, like the, where a cell tower would be that would ping there. This is like the okay. only cell tower even listed anywhere. I mean, look at this. See, like this oh. is Sweet Home, and that's the only cell tower that's... I mean, it's actually right where they said his phone pinged. Like 20 and... Uh, where's the other, that other road? I thought it was this one right here, but I guess it's called... West Holly Road also. But let me just make sure I want to find this. Here, here's what we'll do. There is a street right here and I'm going to turn to the right and there's going to be a tower somewhere. Come on! <laughs> Maybe it'll be one of those. Oh, there it is, right there. See? You found it. Yeah. Yep. See, right there. There's the cell tower, everybody. Bingo! Bang! Yeah, right? Boom! <laughs> <laughs> now look at this cell tower right here. You see how there's the. Uh, up there on the top, there's quadrants. So this one looks like it could be one of the 90 degree ones where there's 90, 90, 90, 90, 90 not 120, 120, 120. And then you can really pinpoint like where the phone pinged, it hit this uh, quadrant, like piece of the pie, if you will. So now I'm gonna look at that. So that means it was right, right through there. I think it was exactly where, where we were looking at. Now what the hell happened? Now I, when I got out of there, it shot up like a cannonball up into the, uh, <laughs> that was wild, yeah. Yeah, so I think it was right in there. You can't actually put the, when you're in Street View, you can actually put a pin, which is kind of kind of weird. Well, you know where it was, everybody. You saw it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, by the way, there's somebody in chat, Becca, she said that she's been following this case for a long time. Maybe she can call, so I'm going to hang up. It would be nice because she's been commenting a lot and she she seemed like she knows a lot about the case and she said she grew up there okay so yeah becca if you would call that would be awesome okay great i just wanted to call and you know share my theory thank you for taking my wasn't call wasn't bad wasn't bad wasn't bad i'm sorry i had to debunk the <laughs> hell out of it no i'm just kidding it's still possible <laughs> we just don't know we just don't know <laughs> <laughs> well thank you anyway thank you for yeah. being fun okay see you later all right, bye. Oh, there it is. This is the cell tower right here, everybody. You see that? Mm -hmm. See how it's bending off like that? That's hilarious. All right. I can't see the top of it, right, the way it's supposed to look, but I'm sure that's it. Because see where, as you're looking at it, if I go over to the road, and put this here, watch, watch this, and then I'm going to turn to the left, see, right there. All right. Wild card line, you're on the air. Hey, it is Becca, the soccer mom. Oh, my <laughs> God, the soccer mom. Oh, oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> hey, some, hey, look, it's okay to be a soccer mom. Just not the, the hurting, not the hurting ones. Down. Not the hurting <laughs> soccer moms, okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, hey, I... um grew up in sweet home i currently live in corvallis about oh, wow. 30 miles away hey i went to um, i graduated oregon state oh nice our daughter's gonna go there next year oh cool yeah. so um i have a couple community pages that i followed the story on and um unfortunately it sounds like the police just dropped the ball um i tried commenting more but it blocked me um there was a post that was made um a while back where it was posted that they had spoken to Detective John Lovick, which is from Sweet Home Police Department. And he said that he assured the dad that um, a Detective Chad Rogers 
was working together with him, which Chad Rogers is from uh, Lane County. Um, but they're working together on the case and that a lot of stuff from Lane County and tips were getting checked out. Um, Rogers was on those with Lynn County. He also assured him that they are homicide detectives, not drug detectives. So anyone afraid to come forward in fear of being arrested for drug involvement, that is not the case. They're only looking for information as to finding Danny. Well, I mean, they, are they actually doing, I mean, I know you said they're doing it, but how come there's no, uh, you know. Right, but do we see them doing anything? No. Yeah, everybody always says, oh, we're working diligently. We... We've always got somebody looking at it or something, you know, really? Let, let's see. Yeah. Um, something else that was interesting that I had seen before, um, I never got any follow-up on, was there was a girl in town that was seen tearing down his missing posters that were hung up on telephone poles. Hmm. When was this? When was this, you yeah. said? Yeah, right. Like, when did that um, happen? The post that I... The post that I see was 35 weeks ago, so it was back when he had first. Are you still there? I'm missing. Oh. Yeah. Okay, got kind of quiet. I, I thought like I just dead air for a second. <laughs> Even if you're not sorry, saying anything, you have phone. to twiddle your thumbs or whistle, all right? Or people think you just disappeared off the face of the earth. <laughs> uh, I, well, I, I guess you, yeah. Although I guess you can't really hear uh, thumbs twiddling. Oh, that, no, I, oh my God, I just made another one of Vic's quotes right there, right? I guess you can't <laughs> hear... Th- <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. That's another one. It's going to be on the back of a mug. Here we go. Oh, my. Oh, that's going to be horrible. So, uh, the family has pretty much hosted all their own searches. They have tried to do everything they can from the ground running, but the police don't seem to be helping from what we can see. So, what kind of, like, do you have any... Um, I mean, what's sort of the word on the street, you know? I mean, since you know people there, what are what are people saying? Yeah. That it was drug-related and that they think that he has been killed because of that. And do you think maybe he... Here's the, here's the thing. Uh, a lot of times, um, earthy, you know, I don't know what you call it. Like some people from Eugene, hippie types, they're going to... The, them buying pot as, and selling it they don't feel like that's selling drugs. Okay. Right. So, so he likes pot. So for them, it's like, it's just an herb, man. It's healthy. It's good for you. It's like everybody, you know, that's why, you know, that's, that's sort of the culture anyways in the United States is it's becoming legal all over the place. So for them, it's sort of, you know, so what if it was something perhaps pot related that he maybe was going to buy some or something or, you know, I don't, I don't really know what would have led to a death though. I know it's drug related, but uh, do you think he was overdose, like uh, Darrow said, or was it something drug related? I don't know. I mean, think that she has some valid points in that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, it's possible, but I just thought that him knowing that he was going to come home, it seems odd that he, and he's 28, he's not like 21 experimenting. You know, it'd be weird to do some heavy duty drugs to come back. Uh, you know, to go back home and then work with his dad on somebody's house, you know, unless he just didn't care, you know. Uh, yeah, I don't have, I don't have any other information other than that. Um, just that that poor family has been left to do it on their own. Yeah, that seems so awful. It seems so obviously foul play, you know. Why wouldn't, Absolutely. you know, it's, it, it isn't one of those ones you get, well, he could have just walked off. Really? He, he, he's going to let his dogs just run around in the middle. Uh, it just, and that's uh, one of the biggest things that a lot of his friends were commenting on when this was very first happening is there's no way that he would let his dogs loose from him um, to wander. And they right. knew right then that something was definitely wrong. I think it's kind of, I think it's clear. I don't think he was anywhere near that car when it was put there. That's my opinion. I don't think so either. Yeah, I think that somebody, the dogs must have felt comfortable or whatever, probably, with whoever was driving the car. And they were able to just drive, park it there. And then I don't know what they did, though. See, that's what's kind of weird. You'd almost have to have two cars, right? Because you would drive the car, 
and then you would maybe open the window so the dogs could get out if they wanted to. I don't. I didn't hear that part though. If the windows were down or not. Do you know anything about that? I don't know anything about that. But that area is so rural. You would have to have another car. Right. Yeah. So I was just saying. I'm, I was wondering if the person actually just op let the dogs out the second they got there and just let them run, because if the window, if the car doors were shut and the windows were closed, that's the only answer right because how would the dogs have got it out of that car if the windows weren't down so that's just sort of a little piece you could put together oh so the person pulled the car over opened the doors and just let the dogs run if the windows are not down and the car doors were shut not that that's you know got a lot of uh right you know meaning like oh wow but it would that scenario could actually uh, let's see. So if the windows were not open and the dogs were free, well, the part the thing is it ruins the whole story. Is why is his car way back in the in that field where you don't really even notice it from the road, right? Like why would he go back there? I was kind of thinking that if his dogs are running free and the doors are shut, it's possible that he went there and then was going somewhere with the dogs and then maybe he stumbled upon something and got killed but then you know the cell phone but his pinging. dogs wouldn't have left his side i don't think either right yeah i don't think that he was ever in the area of his car i think that yeah, they panicked either. and left his car there or took it there and dumped right. it well i like to like sometimes they'll pose an argument and then try to tear it down you know because that's how you get to the one that seems to make the most sense the one that you can't tear down the argument uh, like right there, you know, I'm starting to think, oh, okay, yeah, maybe he dro drove the car there, let the dogs out, then they ran, and it's not, or he didn't run, he was with him, but he got killed somehow by somebody. And then the dogs maybe hung out with him for a while, then ran, but th then there was the stuff about they brought the dogs back out there, they didn't seem to go towards anything. Also, why would his car be way back off from the road? Um, and then his cell phone pinged 24 hours after that in town. There's just too many things that doesn't make that work. So I, I do think that it was just dumped there with the dogs uh, either, you know, in the car with the windows down or they opened the doors up and let the dogs out and then shut it. You know, you, you get where I'm going with that part, right? Though It's like, I yeah, don't know. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry to just ramble on there. It was just stream of consciousness. No, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other thing is, uh, I don't even know how to put this tactfully, but I think that the family is not looked upon as a high social status in that town, and so mm -hmm. I think that possibly helped it be on the back burner as well. Yeah, I think uh, I, I oh. sort of brought that up uh, with Audra when she was on. It's like I, I did go and I sort of found where they lived, and you know there was a few, you know, quite a few cars in the driveway and stuff like that and then the houses around there were nice and kept up and stuff so i could see people you know it's wrong you know but they treated them probably differently probably the cops just uh, especially like they didn't think of them as uh you know equal to other people or something right yeah god what a crazy right, case well. you definitely should have way more Law enforcement. I mean, the FBI, this is a great one for the FBI, actually. Perfect for them. This is the kind of stuff they figure out. But there's no way in hell right, that... Well, okay, sorry. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot. Thanks for calling. Bye. All right, appreciate it. Bye. Yeah. See, the FBI definitely... Uh, there's no way in hell that lead detective they were talking about is going to say, yes, I'm not doing very well, FBI. C can you please help? <laughs> yeah, she kept trying to get off the phone, and I wouldn't let her get off the phone. <laughs> but thanks for calling. Yeah, she she had some good information there, didn't she? Uh, the town people think it's drug-related. Was it really? How come it was uncomfortable, Becca? Gosh. 
Hey, it, tell me why I wasn't. Did, did I make you uncomfortable or just being on the air? It's uncomfortable. Yeah, I thought she was great. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, you did great, Becca. You, you're one of the better callers. You you really had what you you know knew what you were going to say, and so whether you were uncomfortable or not, just realize the next time it's just so simple because you did great. There, there's nothing about the way you called that you should go. Well, maybe I need to work on. I'm the one that needs to work on crap. All right. Although it's hard because you can't teach old dogs new tricks. You know what I'm talking about? Anyways, I was able to put the three-mile cell phone tower radius, two and a half, three, three miles. So if you look at that, look how perfect that is. They said his phone pinged around in this area right here. And that's the only tower really around there. So here's the thing. Let's go back to that map for a second. I wonder how many places... Let's see if we can match this up with the... Uh, Okay, so it's over here. It's down this way, right? Yeah, Marcola. That's the name of that place. There isn't a damn cell phone anywhere down there. Look at that. Nothing. So that's Marcola. So let's just look at this. And it comes down and then a little hook there. Actually, let me just find Marcola. All right, so there's Marcola. Yeah, there, there isn't, you can't even really make a cell phone call Anywhere around in this area right here. Well, maybe. Let me, let me make sure here. This one right here. Yeah, see, that's three miles right there. That other cell tower is over in this area, right? Three miles radius is like this. There, there's nothing. At least not registered. Sometimes there's cell towers that aren't registered. So, yeah. So that's really kind of strange now when you think about it. His cell phone pinged here the, a day after his, uh, I think, a day after his car like there was no pinging at all for 24 hours after the 23rd and then his cell phone started pinging in this area i think he said something like 10 times or something like that like it was all over the place moving around in this area but how would that be possible the thing is his car was found here two days later so it's, it's possible that after 24 hours, they were gone. Then, then they were in this area with the dogs in the car and so forth doing something. 
And then the next day drove out here, dropped his car off with the dogs. Ah, uh, let's see Mark's Ridge. I think the phone was turned off, Ryan. That's what my opinion is. But yeah, let's check out Mark's Ridge. Yeah, looks like Mark's Ridge, it might, look at the, the whole two and a half, three mile thing is, it's not like an exact science. So like this area there could probably get a connection to that cell phone, but it'd be pretty weak. You know, starting to get weaker. So it's almost like on the 23rd, something happened to him, and then they took 24 hours or so to dispose of his body, but turned off his cell phone. Then they drove back into town with his car, but his friend was following. You know, there was two cars. Then they get into this area, and then the cell phone pings. They're doing some things. Heck, they could have even put his body somewhere in here because it said his phone pinged like 10 times. That's what the dad said, in this area. So maybe they put the body in this area. Um, I, I hope you don't mind that I'm speaking so bluntly. This is just the way to do it. I, I don't want to always have to figure out how to w phrase something that sounds PC. So, driving around in this area, then the car is found way down here. You know, uh, I think a day after the cell phone pings. Could have been around the same day, though. They said it was 24 hours, so we don't know when his car was here. It was only found two days later, right? So, the other scenario, okay. See, we... A lot of times, that's what our brains do when we say, oh, the car, the car was found there two days later, therefore it was put there two days later. Well, we don't know that. Because if it was off the side of the road, out in the middle of a field, maybe somebody didn't notice it, or maybe nobody reported it until that day. So it's possible that car was actually there on the 23rd, not the 25th. Right? So it could have been there on the 23rd. Then whoever did something to him had his phone 24 hours later back in the town and they were doing whatever they they turned on the phone they wanted to make it look like he was in the town i, I don't know right, you know either that or they just took his phone and were and were were actually dumb and didn't realize phones ping and of course it wouldn't be pinging in this area because we just showed you that there's no cell towers anywhere near this area here so when they finally took the person's phone, took Daniel's phone, and when they got into town, it actually set off this ping location. And if they live in Sweet Home, they might have been moving around. They might have just put the cell phone in their trunk or something. They were doing some things. And later they went, oh, crap. Oh, my God, his cell phone's been in there. And then they turned it off and then disposed of it. Although it was 24 hours that it, yeah, see, there, there you go. That throws in that loop. You know, so on the 23rd, if the car was abandoned there, then why didn't it ping in town for 24 hours? It's not like they're going to go camp at the car, right? <laughs> so I think the answer is in there somewhere. Yeah. All right, so who's calling in with some uh, some theories? You got that there, uh, Scotty? Yeah. I think uh, one of the keys is the 24 hours his phone was not pinging. That means something. It, what, it, what it means is, is his phone was not in Sweet Home for a 24-hour period. And somehow, I, th I think he was, this is just my opinion based on logic and re you know, reason. I think he was killed 
in that first 24 hours and and I don't think he was killed where the car was I think he was killed somewhere else his body was dumped and then they may have even driven through here not knowing his they might have had his cell phone with him the pings are crazy though right I mean it's hard to negotiate that part because you're saying okay for 24 hours he was missing I mean not it wasn't pinging at all and then it starts pinging and it pinged like 10 times and then it just never pinged again after that 24 hours after he you know disappeared basically so if you went missing on the 23rd then there's a 24-hour period with no pinging and then it started pinging again like the dad said I think like 10 times in this area within this circle here yeah let me think it's kind of interesting actually it almost uh, I think my first instinct was probably the closer one that he was taken up here and Dumped. They actually knew about pinging. They turned off his phone. Somewhere around in here is where he was put. They know it. Then they turned off his phone. Then drove his car, followed by another person. Like it could have even been the same night, the same day. Drove all the way out to uh, mile marker 13. And underneath these power lines and then drove his car either this way or this way I don't really know which one and then somebody finally noticed it two days later then they drove back into town with his cell phone intentionally and once they got into town they had his phone ping on purpose to make it look like he was still in town here so what that does is it throws the police off to where his car would be and, and it just happened to be seen by somebody. It sounds like it was off to the side. And then it also throws the police off to where he might, may have been dumped because had the phone been on, um, you can still get pings even though it's not, ex you know, because this isn't exact. You can get low signal out in this area it would still show that there was something going on. Although, here's the problem with that, right? The problem with that is, is let's say you're all the way out here at this lake and you've got you to gotta ping on, the, on this tower here. Well, this tower doesn't know how far away you are at all. I think there might be signal quality information on that, though. So they might get some information from that. But it might just show that there's a, uh, it's coming from this quadrant. And heck, that could be anywhere in this whole area. Like, let's say the quadrant was over on this side. Well, it could be anywhere like this all the way out to here. So it doesn't really show you a location. And there isn't another tower to triangulate off of. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I already, I already got the cell phone location, tower, I found it. Now, which, which one is this tower, though? Is this, a, is this a different tower? Which tower is this one, Jack? Because that, that one there isn't, doesn't show up on the... Uh, yeah, that's the one we were looking at, the, uh, that I said was over three miles, easily way over three miles, watch. Watch. That's three miles right there. And then that's all the way out. You're at six and a half to that one. So, yeah, got it. 
See, I didn't even need, I didn't even need all that that information. <laughs> I just didn't know, you know. But that's cool to have the exact location. I'll put a pin there for another tower. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That thing's floating in the air. What's it doing? Whoa. <laughs> that, that pin isn't even connected to the earth. You look at that thing. Whoa. That is some weird stuff right there. Make those red. Isn't that kind of cool how the uh, Google Earth actually lays the circle on the terrain going around like that? Pretty weird, huh? Yeah, so, you know, I guess it's possible. I mean, that's... It's not unheard of to get a ping that far away. It used to be three to, I don't know, five at the maximum, but I wonder if now there's stronger signals. I, I don't know. I haven't checked into that. Maybe I'll do a video on cell tower pings. You know, you can watch it just before going to sleep and go to bed. And you'll go to sleep in like 30 seconds watching that one. Of course, I'd make it funny, so then you wouldn't go to sleep, though. That's the problem. So what are you guys re talking about right now with the flirting and stuff like that? I'll be back in a second. What do you want me to get out of that, Jack? That it's would they have you think they'd have better signals if they were up higher like that? I guess it's they could, right? <laughs> Take my time, man. When I leave, man, the, the, the chat goes through hell in a handbasket. Are you kidding me? All right, so does anybody else have any more thoughts on this one? It's actually pretty intriguing in terms of um, you've got these, the two friends that he was with disappeared, 
One of them, his mom hid for four or five days, and the other kid just disappeared and came back after four or five days. So were they in touch with each other? I mean, this is all stuff the police could have figured out, right? They didn't do it. Right, his quote friends. Hey, Becca, so if your kid's just going to go to college, and that was 18 years ago, um, you know what I'm saying? That's, uh, <laughs> I know, my, I, I'm too logical, man. I'm too logical. How can we ask Ray to look into a cold case of, yeah, you can just email me. I haven't checked my tips email for a while. I want to go check that out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Becca, come on. Well, I don't really have any more to add to this in terms of... Uh, let me just think through this one more time here. I don't know why I marked this Quartzville Creek thing off. I, I really... I don't know what... This is from a long time ago. I don't know why I marked that off. Let me see where I put that. Yeah, that's not even part of the... Well, let's see. Hold on. Yeah, that's not even part of it. Now one of you sleuths will type in Quartzville Creek and say, Oh, look what happened there a long time ago. Might be kind of cool to actually drive out there. And, uh, you know, it's only, I think it's only about 100 miles away. You know, do some videotaping. Kind of try to figure out, maybe, hell, pick up his dad and say, hey, show me around. What's going on? What's what's this? I'm sure, I, I bet I could get him to laugh a little bit. Guarantee it. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a great idea, Justin. Just start banging on doors. Probably bang on the door of the, the, the drug dealer themselves. Yeah, no, it'd be fun to uh, go out there and, uh, you know, when I say fun, I just mean interesting. See, a lot of people take words wrong. Like if you say, God, it's, it's, I, it's, I have fun looking into these cases. They go, oh, how dare you have fun? There's people out there. Look, well, yeah, it's fun because it's interesting, you know, right? Like, you know when people put together a puzzle? Is it really fun? I mean, like, like, do you really mean fun fun? But obviously it's fun and interesting for them because they put together puzzles, right? Yeah. People are just so holier than thou. I've never seen anything worse than these cases. Good example was that first minute or two of the show. You know, you say so, it just doesn't write for them, and you know you got to hear it a certain way, and then it just turns into a, a shit show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, so what Robert's really saying is that he is holier than everybody. But he tries hard to be less holier than them because, uh, you know. Hey, what was the, the quote that I said a minute ago? Yeah, I said, yeah, well, if you're not saying anything, you have to be either twiddling your thumbs or whistling. And then I said, although twiddling your thumbs doesn't make any noise. I think it, was, it sounded better the way I said it before, though. I,
Yeah, twiddling your thumbs doesn't make any sound. You know what I'm saying? It sure is, Sarah. It sure is. It's so lonely. If, if only it was ivory. If only. I'd break off a chunk and sell it. And buy a studio. That's another one. That's going to be another one of my uh, lines, isn't it? Do you have a? You live in an ivory tower? No. If I did, I'd break it up into parts and sell it. <laughs> Man, those mugs are going to have a lot of different quotes on it. This is another uh, Jack cell phone tower. I mean, there's towers everywhere, I saw, but they're just nowhere near what we're looking at, right? Let's see, maybe that would affect, uh, I guess that, that tower would affect, uh, I guess that's a good one there. Was it Mike? He just scrolled up there. No, Jack, sorry. Yeah, uh, the way that I would, it seems like you would drive, it would be like this. You take this Holly Road right out of Sweet Home, you come up like this. And then this cell tower here would, would have hit this car right when it had to make this turn to go on Brush Creek Road because Brush Creek Road then continues on and then it runs right into, uh, it becomes that Marcola Road. See, like this is Marcola Road. I don't know where, I, uh, let's see. I don't know when it changes over. Yeah, Marcola Road there, and then what? And then right there, it's still Marcola. And then look at that. See, it's Brush Creek Road right there, which is kind of weird because it just sort of changes name. Look at that, Marcola Road, and that's the main road. So it's Marcola Road, and then look at Brush Creek Road. So right at this point, it changes names. So that's how I would have driven to where he was found. And to do that, you have to go through this other cell tower that's right here, just for a moment. So that kind of speaks to the phone. The phone perhaps never made it with the car where it was found, right? 
unless again they turned it off like it was never with them the people who dropped the car off there did not have that phone with them or it would have pinged in this area Oh, is that what that is, Karen? Okay, yeah. So there was a reason that I had that. And was supposed to be with friends and his dogs. Quoted straight from missing poster of him. Oh, that's funny. Is that the one that I had on the screen earlier? God, that'd be kind of weird, wouldn't it? Let's see. That's nah, probably a different poster. Hmm. So there really was a reason I had that. No, there... Let's see. There wasn't anything. So I think that somebody drove the car back up in there. The other car waited on the road. Then somebody walked out. However, there wasn't even really any footprints other than some really large footprints with uh, treads on the bottom. And the father thinks maybe that was the police officer who went out to the car. See, I knew one of you guys would be able to find that. Isn't that weird? Although it didn't seem like it was related because I didn't have it in the same folder. That's pretty, it's mildly interesting though because it's on the same directional path as Foster Lake and Mark Ridge. You know, you're, you're heading out in sort of a eastern you know northeastern direction from sweet home see northeast i like that All right, put it in the right folder that time. All right, what do we got here? Yep, way right up there. Yep, way up there seems a lack. I don't know what that means. Thank you, chatters. Most are behaving well tonight. Yeah, I got a weird call though earlier, didn't I? Yeah, so Karen Acosta also donated to me on PayPal. Thank you very much. I might have said that earlier, but I, um, I just saw it just now on PayPal. And Constant Cloak. Hey, Constance, are you still there? Is that your real last name? That's a pretty cool last name, too. Cloak. Well, I don't really know what else I can say. I think this is, did a pretty good job of laying out the, you know, the locations of everything. You know, again, we've got the, the Safeways right here. His father lived right in this area, really close to there. The, now that was on the 23rd at 
12, uh, 43. Then two days later, somebody spotted his car. We'll start wording it like that. At the mile 13 marker underneath these power lines right here. So these are power lines. You can actually see the power lines on Google Earth. And if you're going to look at the street view, you go down. And his car was either parked on this side of the road or that side. His father would know the answer to that. That's where it would be interesting to actually have him on. And he could point. Yeah, it was back here. You know, he could tell me exactly where the car was. And that would give a lot better context of sort of the you know nefariousness if that's a term right like is was it way back there trying to be hidden was it sort of pulled off to the side or was it just sort of right here you know and both of his dogs were seen in this area i believe they were seen almost right away if i remember right like on the 25th now that would mean if the dogs were seen there right away at a farm on the 25th it would be likely that they actually that's when the car was put there so I'd like to know that also um, then one of the dogs was found on the 5th and the other one was found on the I think it was was it the 18th 14th so one was found on the 3rd, excuse me, of 2000, May 3rd, 2017, and then May 14th was when the other dog was found, Misa. Coda was found on the 3rd, and they were both returned to Daniel's father. The 3rd and the 14th. And then apparently... 24 hours, though, after he went missing, I think prior to his car being found, though, I'd, I'd have to get clarification on that, but I think that's right. His, felf, his cell phone started pinging in this area right here, this cell tower location, inside of here, like 10 times. Then, based on perhaps a tip of some sort, his father was up in this area and found a blanket, two blankets, uh, a sleeping bag, and a hat that was his son's up there. And that's really basically about it. He was supposed to be back home with his father that evening. Uh, I know I'm missing some other information, but check out John Lorden's video. Listen to the father's audio, his interview, and actually get more detailed information out of it. There was some weird stuff with the police early on. Well, was Robert going to call in? Hey, thanks, Miss Mamie. So, do you guys feel like you got a little bit out of this at least? You know, now if, when you watch, uh, try to watch John Lorden's video tomorrow or something like that. And then there's also a vanished podcast that he also mentioned. I think if you combine all three of these together, you'll have a really good picture of what they're talking about. All right. So, I really uh, appreciate you guys coming on. And I, I want to thank everybody who donated tonight. That was very kind, especially on a, a one-off Monday, right? <laughs> uh, does this feel like a, a possible Furious Freaks night? It, it didn't seem like too much of a downer since he's, you know, he's still just missing. We don't know, right? Yeah, yesterday was bad. Okay, all right, let's do it. <laughs> I don't want the the uh, PC police to come down on me. Oh, my God, Gray did the fear. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. I'm going to have to say something about Gray. All 
All right. Gotta get it queued up. Oh, God. <laughs> this is Gray. You're on the air. Oh, thank you, Gray. This is Jim. <laughs> Jim? I just wanted to, before you signed off, I wanted oh. to say what a great job you're doing. And uh, I do admit this case has a lot of strange things going. Yeah. Hopefully when I finish, I'll finish watching John's video and maybe I'll be more knowledgeable of it. But yeah, I just uh, wanted to say that because that you're just doing a wonderful job. And uh, that's about all I really have to say. Though. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, thank you. Sometimes I know that I go um, sort of around, you know, I keep going over it and over again, but that's how I start you know, eliminating things. You know what I mean? Like you keep saying it over oh, and over. Uh, well, you know. And hopefully people yeah, yeah, don't, don't mind the, the process, you know. Oh, no, no, no. I love it. <laughs> I think oh, I'm cool. always mesmerized by how you find all these details on the map and everything. I'm running a lot from just watching you. <laughs> yeah, cool. Well, don't don't go out and start doing it, man. You know, I, I got to have a show. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't worry about that. There's going to be like 47 <laughs> other video. Oh, you see this? I, I learned this from Gray. Ah, crap. You know, that's okay. Man. As long as it helps out out there. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. it sure does. Well, hey, I appreciate you calling in, and um, I'd like to know, yeah, after you guys all watch, uh, you know, when you watch Lorden's video, maybe listen to that Vanished podcast, too. Yeah, and, I will. I'll do that, too. And then just sort of see I'm if... I'm glad you mentioned that. You know, when you get it all together, and then go back and watch my video, and then sort of... You might even, if you can, somehow, if you can listen to... Uh, especially, yeah, maybe even the Vanished podcast, because that gets more into, like, the timeline stuff. Okay. And then have the video open and then, you know, see if you can kind of uh, follow along a little bit. It might be hard because I'm moving around, but, you know, you know, you'll be able to figure out what they're talking about, I think. Okay, I will. That's exactly what I'll do. That sounds really cool. <laughs> yeah, it's actually <laughs> that's you, sort Ray. of, yeah. All right. Well, thanks for calling in, Jim. Oh, you're welcome, Ray. Thank you for taking my call. <laughs> All right. Talk to you later. Hey, goodbye, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> All right, thanks, Jim. You got one in a, at the buzzer. Three, two, one. Oh, and Jim calls in. Here, I'm going to make sure I hit the save button here. Because during Furious Freaks, Google Earth tends to crash sometimes. And if you don't save all those little things that you did, you're messed up. You know, after doing this for a while, the earth seems really little. <laughs> I keep expecting to see something else, and then I go, oh, well, yeah, I've been there, yep, been there. Maybe we could try some of these islands out here again. I like doing those. Start with New Zealand. There we go. And a three, two, one.
Isn't that the craziest thing in the world? Easter Island. This is where everybody starved themselves to death. Yeah, that, that's crazy, that Eastern Island, isn't it? Out in the middle of nowhere. Somebody, somehow they found it there, and they spent all their lives building those little heads on the ground, and then they ate themselves to death. Not themselves, but they ran out of food. <laughs> There's another line. They ate themselves to death. Well, not themselves, they just ran out of food. Come on, Vic, where are you? You got a lot of material tonight. Anyways, hey, everybody. Thanks for showing up. Um, hopefully, uh, I'd like to do some more of these. I kind of like being able to uh, just, you know, show the locations and everything and get everybody feeling like they were there, all right? So thank you, everybody, who donated, too. I really appreciate it. Thank you to all the moderators who keep the all the non-freaks in line there. Because we're all freaks, right? I mean, you know that, right? We're all freaks. We're, those are good people, right? So. I am still here. Fading, fading fast, though. Fading fast. All right. So until next time, everybody. Fill in the line. Be safe out there.